What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to build this to-do list app with PyQt5 and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build this to-do list app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, moving right along in our PyQt5 playlist. In this video, we're gonna build this little to-do list app, very basic app, but some pretty cool things. We're gonna use the designer. We're also gonna use Python itself to write the code, and it should be a lot of fun. So you see, we can add an item here, you know, thing. Click here, boom, it pops up. We can click here, we can delete it. Uh, we can clear the list completely and all the good stuff. So that's what we're gonna do in this video. So let's head over to our terminal real quick. And I'm in my C PyQt5 directory where we've been working throughout this playlist. And you can see I've got my virtual environment turned on, very important. And so let's just start the designer. So to do that, we know we type designer. And then boom, it pops up. Now we want a main window. So let's go ahead and do that. And we can come up here if we want and give this a title of to-do list. I don't know, whatever. I don't think we need an exclamation point there, do we? <laughs> So this is going to be very simple. We need a box that we can type stuff in. We need some buttons that we can click to do things. And we need a list box in order to sort of keep track of our list. So let's head over here and let's see, we can just sort of start pulling things over and we'll play around with this stuff in a minute. Uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller so it kind of fits on the screen better. All right, maybe something like that. And we also want then a box at the top that we can type stuff into. So let's come down here to input widgets. And let's say, let's use the line edit, that should work. And then we also need a list box in order to keep track of everything. So let's look through here. And you see, we've got this list view. We probably don't want that. We want this items widget. We want the list widget. So grab that, don't get confused here and accidentally grab the list view. That's not what we want. We want the list widget. And there we go. So now we can just sort of play around with this, sort of resize these however we want. Let's make these guys a little bigger and do something like that. I don't know, just sort of play around here. And obviously, we're going to need to resize these a little to get them however we want. And then we've got our actual list box thingy here. We can pull this down and sort of make this however big we want. Okay, and we're good to go. So let's go through here. And here for this button, we want to add an item. So let's come up here and let's rename this guy. Let's go add item underscore push button. And for this one, we want it to be probably delete item underscore push button. And for this one, let's call this one clear all underscore push button. So we can keep track of these buttons later on when we're writing the Python code to make them actually do stuff. And then on the buttons themselves, we can kind of come down here and change the text on it here. So this is going to be add item to list. This one is going to be what? delete item from list. And this one will be clear list or clear the list, whatever. So okay, that looks good. So for this guy, let's change the name of him. Did we do that already? Line edit. Let's go uh, add item underscore line edit. And for this guy, let's name this instead of list widget. Let's name this I don't know my list underscore list widget. It's kind of important to change the name of these. Not so much now because we're only using one list widget, but if you had multiple list widgets, you'd have to give them each name. So I'll just go ahead and give them each name. So, all right, that's pretty much all we need, right? Go ahead and form preview this guy. And I don't know, that looks pretty good. I guess we can make this a little bigger if we wanted to, or kind of move it up a little if we wanted to. I don't know, just sort of playing around here. Yeah, move these buttons up a bit. And if you click on them, I'm just using the up arrow key to sort of bop them up one, 
Let's make this a little bigger. All right, that's looking pretty good. Maybe something like that. And I'm just sort of messing around here. I think, okay, that probably looks decent enough. All right, so we're good to go. So now let's convert this into a Python file that we can then tinker with. So we first wanna come up here and save it. So let's go file, save as, and I wanna save this in my C slash PyQt5 directory. Notice there's a whole bunch of other things that was listed as by default. I'm just gonna put it in our PyQt5 directory and you'll see why in just a second. So let's call this to do, and it's gonna save it as a .ui file. So we can sort of come over here and ls, and let's see, there's our to do.ui file. So now let's convert that to a Python file. We've done this before. We just type py uic5, and then we wanna go dot dash x, and then what file do we wanna convert? Well, we wanna convert to do.ui, and we wanna dash o, that's not the zero, that's the letter zero, that's the letter o, right? The lowercase o. So that we wanna output it to todo.py. Okay, so now if we ls, we see there is in fact a todo.py. And we can run this guy if we want. We can go python todo.py, just to make sure, and there it is, it says todo list. We've got some stuff. None of these buttons actually work, but we're good to go. Now, you'll notice there's no scroll bar on here, but it will put one automatically as our list gets bigger. So we don't have to worry about that, and that's cool. So, okay, we've got that. Now let's open this in Sublime Text. So let's head over to File, Open, and we wanna be in PyQt5. We wanna find that todo.py file, there it is. And let's open it, I always get rid of these comments. So the first thing we need to do is create functions for each of the buttons. So when we click on the button, it runs the function and then it does something. So if we look through here, we see this is all the stuff and we can sort of look through here until we see a push button and there it is. And then here's where it defines the push button. So we wanna to come to this thing and let's add some codes to where it fires a function when the button is clicked. And we've done this before lots of times. We just call clicked and set that equal to a lambda, L-M-B-D-A. And again, this is a lowercase L. I know it looks like a capital L, but this is a capital L. See how it's very white and very brackety and like this? This is a swoopy L, kind of looks like a backwards J. Uh, that's what Sublime, what this font does with the lowercase L. So that's a lowercase L, just be sure you remember that. And then we wanna go self dot, and let's call this add it. So I'm just gonna copy this whole thing here. And why did I call it add it? Because this is the add item push button. So we want a function called add it or whatever, uh, whenever you push that button. So let's look through here for the next one. Here's delete. So do the same thing, just come to the end of this, pop this in, instead of add it, let's call this one delete it, All right? Good to go there. And let's look for the third one, push button, push button. Uh, there it is. And that's the clear all button. So let's come down here, paste this in, and let's call this one clear it. So we have add it, delete it, and clear it. So, okay, we've got our three function calls. Let's save this. Now we need to come down here and actually write those functions. So we can come right about here and let's say add item to list. So this is define add it. And that's a function we wanna pass in self because we're always passing in self with these things. And while we're at it, let's just kinda make two more of these. And this one was delete it. And this, let's comment this delete item from list, and this one was clear it, and this is gonna be clear all items from list. Okay, so we've got our three functions. Now, here we wanna add an item. So let's define what the item is. So I'm gonna create a variable called item, and what's, what's the item gonna be? Well, it's gonna be whatever we typed into that box at the top, and this is gonna be self dot, uh, what do we call that, add item, I think underscore line edit dot text. And let's see, I think it's add item. Let's go back to our designer. And if we click on this, yeah, add item underscore line edit. So we could just sort of copy this if we wanted to. It's add item, yeah, that's right. So that, when we call the dot text on that, it will grab whatever's in that box and assign it to this item variable. So now we have the item, we have it designated. Now we need to actually list it. So let's say uh, grab the item from the list box. And then here, add item to list. 
And it's going to be self dot my list underscore list widget dot add item and we want to pass in item. So why is this my list list widget? Because we come back here, click on our list thing here. That's what this is my list underscore list widget. That's what we named it. So that's what we can reference. So okay. Finally, let's uh, clear the uh, item box thing, right? So when you type in your item after you click the button, you want to delete it so that you can type in the next item, right? So to do that, we just go self dot. Uh, what do we call this add underscore no add item underscore line edit. And then we want to dot set the text equal to just nothing. So let's go ahead and save this. Let's come down here to these guys and give them a pass so that we can run this and see if that works. So let's save this head back over here, run our guy here. So let's say test, I spelled that wrong, click this boom, it pops up there. And we're good to go. And you notice it deletes it there. So item two, you click this boom, it adds it here, deletes it from there. So all right, pretty good. So far, so good. Now let's do this clear list one because it's super easy to do. So let's head back over here and come down here. So we already know the name of our widget It's this right here. So we just want to put in self dot my list underscore list widget. And then we just want to call dot clear. So that should do the trick there. So let's save this and run it just to make sure because you never know. <laughs> All right, so let's just add a couple of things. Now we click boom, it clears the list. All right, so so far so good. Now that leaves us the delete item from list. And this is a little bit more tricky, uh, not too hard, but just a little bit more intricate. So let's come up here to the delete it. And what we need to do now is grab the selected row or current row is what sort of PyQt refers to it as the current row. So let's name that clicked because we we're going to click on an item in our list and then we want to delete it. So clicked will be name it anything you want. But to me, that makes sense because we're clicking on it. So clicked will set that equal to what our widget is here. My list self dot my list dot whatever and then dot current row. And this will give us an index number. And these things are, are numbered like a Python list. So the first one is zero, the next one is one, etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. And in fact, we could see that if we want by let's just grab this, and let's output clicked. All right, so let's just save this and run it just to see what's going on here, because it's kind of interesting. So let's say, uh, item one, add this item two, add that item three, three, we'll add that. So now if we click on item two, we would and then click this, we would expect this to return one because the first one is the zeroth item. The next one is the first and the next one is the third. So let's click on this, click this boom. Uh oh, oh, it's, <laughs> it's returning an integer and text boxes can only take string. So oops, real quick, let's just convert this to a string. Boom, boom. All right. So now try that again. So item one, bear with me here, item two, and item three. Now when we click on this one, this should return one, boom, it returns one. If we click on this one, it should return zero, zero. This one will be two, right? So zero, one, two. So what that's doing is like I said, returning the kind of index number uh, right here, the current row. So we don't actually want to put that on the screen. So now we've grabbed it, let's uh, delete selected row, we're not deleting an item, we're deleting a row in the list box, right? So we know which row number to delete, because we've just grabbed it by grabbing the current row number, right? So here, all we have to do is go, well, let's just copy this again. So we want to take this and we want to what do we want to do? We want to take item, and then what item clicked? Right. So by taking the item, we're taking it from the list. Think of it like that. Right. So uh, which item are we taking? Whatever we've clicked, which is this number. Right. So the first one will be the zeroth one. It will take out row zero. Right. Pretty simple. So let's go ahead and save this. Head back over here. One more time. Run this guy. So let's just boom, boom, boom. Uh, item four. So here we can click on this. 
boom, and it deletes it. Here, this were were guy, boom, it deletes it. Turwa, boom, it deletes it. We can clear it. There we go. Just that easy. So basic to-do list app, pretty simple. Now, obviously, this isn't permanent. If we close this and open it back up, our to-do list will disappear. So we're not actually saving this to the database. This video is getting a little bit long, so maybe we'll talk about databases coming up here in the next few videos so we can save our to-do list to a database to call it later whenever we open this program a second time. But for now, uh, it's pretty easy. Just getting a, a list set up, adding items to the list, deleting items from the list and clearing the list, and uh, really, really kind of cool. So that's all for this video. If you'd like to be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codeenemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships and pages $49. To access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codeby.com, and I'll see you in the next video.